Today's conference is being recorded. This time, I'd like to turn the conference over to Mr. Chris Costello with UFC. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks, Cody. I'd like to now welcome in the main event for UFC 232, former light heavyweight champion, number one contender John Jones, and number two contender Alexander Gustafsson, who will battle for the light heavyweight championship. And with that, we can open up to questions. Okay, question. Please sign by pressing star one on your telephone keypad. If you're using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Once again, that is star one if you'd like to ask a question. We'll take our first question from Jeffrey Harris with 411 Mania MMA. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, uh, for joining us today. Uh, first question uh, for Alexander. This is a rematch uh, that's five years in the making. Um, I think there was a time where we thought we were going to get this fight in 2014. Um, then, you know, due to injuries and scheduling, uh, we never saw it. Uh, now it's finally going to happen. Um, just what's it like for you to be on the cusp of this, this rematch and fight you've been looking for for almost half a decade? Well, it's great. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to get in there. Now, can you bring us back at all to 2015, like when it, when you got hurt and I guess the frustration you felt from when the rematch was originally scheduled and then it got put off because Jones ended up fighting Cormier? Yeah, that was, that was tough. That was tough, but... You know, it's... Uh, uh, it, it, it was it was pretty tough, but you know it's it's in the past and uh, here we are now. We're fighting the 29th, and I can't be more ready. Then I can't be more ready for this fight, and I'm feeling great. And you know, like I said, I can't wait. I can't wait. Question for John: You're unbeaten, I think, in 11 uh, UFC title fights. Uh, this will be Gustafsson's third UFC title fight. He's uh, yet to win. Uh, a UFC title fight yet. Do you think that says anything about what type of athletes and fighters you are? You, you said, do you think it says anything about what type of athlete I am? Well, about you, you compared to Gustafsson. Well, what's, your, what's your question exactly? Well, because you've, you've won 11 UFC title fights, he's yet to win one. Yeah. Do you think... Do you think it says anything about you being a certain type of athlete, and do you think maybe Gustafsson's missing anything? Um, uh, what, it, what it shows me is that this is, this is who I am, this is what I am, and this is my comfort zone. High-level fight is my comfort zone. Championship fight is my comfort zone. Five-round fight is my comfort zone. Uh, fighting the baddest dude in the world is my comfort zone. I've been doing this shit since I was 23 years old. And uh, it's always been exactly the same with a hand raised. So that's all this tells me is that another day at the office. No fight's a big fight. It's just another fight. This is what I do. This is what God put me on this planet to do. And, uh, and yeah, another day at work. Now, John, um, one interesting little factoid going into this fight is you've actually fought more recently than uh, Gustafsson. He last fought in uh, May 2017. Um, could, that, could that affect him at all going into the fight, knowing what you know about Gustafsson? I don't know. I don't know how, how Alexander is going to uh, handle the layover, the layoff, and the pressure. I don't really know how he's going to handle it. I I trained and I predict uh, him to handle it well, but uh, I know how I'm going to handle it. You know, the last time I was out for a year, I came back and knocked out the so-called greatest fighter ever, and that's Daniel Cormier. So I have no doubt in my abilities, my training, my team, uh, my layoffs. Uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding with me. I have no losses on my record. So uh, I'm just going to go and be myself. And last question for uh, Gustafsson. Since you haven't fought since May 2017, uh, do you anticipate any ring rust? I mean, people throw that term around a lot, and it has been a while since your last fight. 
Um, so I guess, what do you do ready to get prepared? Because this is one of the biggest fights of your career. And it is a five-round title fight, so you won't have any ring rust for this type of challenge. I don't believe in ring rust at all. Uh, the layoff has just been good for me. It's just been good for me. I'm, I'm a different fighter today than I was, than I, than I was one and a half years ago. And uh, yeah, this is my time. I feel this is the time this fight should happen. I'm, I've never been this ready in my life. And uh, yeah, it's, I feel like no pressure at all. I'm just enjoying every second of it. It's a dream come true. I'm living the dream right now, so I'm enjoying every second of it. And I'm going to enjoy every second of it in the fight. Five rounds for me these days are not a problem at all. I'm ready for 10 rounds. Thank you, gentlemen, and good luck to both of you. Thank God you. bless you, brother. Thank you. We'll now take our next question from Aaron Bronstetter with TSN. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'll start with a question for John. Um, since coming back, you said you weren't interested in fighting Daniel Cormier, but late last night you challenged him to a rematch uh, for the light heavyweight title. Why is he back on your radar, and uh, does the fight at heavyweight potentially interest you as well? Well, the only reason why I brought up Daniel Cormier's name is because he brought up my name. And so I just figured, you know, I used to kind of, when I, you know, when I was in trouble, you know, I sat back all summer long and let everybody just, talk as much shit as they want and just talk blindly with no one, no facts. I watched everyone that I beat in the past say, oh, he was on steroids when he fought me the first time. That's why he beat me. I just sat back and let everybody have at it and I just stayed quiet for almost a whole year. Now I'm back getting ready to reclaim my throne and uh, and uh, the, the sitting down and being quiet days are over. You know, Daniel Cormier uh opened his mouth about me. You know, he wants to sell to the people that steroids had something to do with my success. Uh, he would love it. He, that, that's, the, that's the dialogue. He, he wants to get out there. That's the narrative. He wants to get out there. And I'm going to nip it in the butt. Um, so I challenged Daniel Cormier to be my first title defense. Um, and uh, let's see what he does. I don't think he's re responded yet. Um, and I think everybody knows he doesn't want to fight me a second, a third time. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not out to get Daniel Cormier. I'm just protecting myself. The guys out there making comments about me, and, uh, and I'm just, you know, just responding. It is good. When you look at the light heavyweight picture, though, for future. I guess, title fights for you, there aren't a whole lot of great options out there. But if you look at heavyweight, there's a lot of potential super fights. I know when you came back, that was something of interest to you. Is a move to heavyweight something yeah. that you would want to do? Yeah, you know, first, first uh, getting this light heavyweight championship uh, back in New Mexico, where it's been since 2011, that's my first goal. And then uh, after that, you know, I don't, I don't really know what's next after that. Uh, whether Daniel Cormier decides to come get this third loss or, uh, or super fights at heavyweight division. Um, I don't really know. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty up for whatever right now. I got a great challenge ahead of me, so I'm just focusing on this. And, uh, you know, after that, I'll, I'll start playing with some options with Dana and Ari and those guys. Hunter. Now, the California State Athletic Commission recently recommended you do VADA testing for this fight. Um, you decided to forego that. What went into that decision and were you at all worried about the optics of that? Um, you know what? I was actually advised not to get in it too much. Uh, it's all a pretty new conversation. It's, it's something I haven't really been putting too much energy into. Like every ounce of my body and spirit, my mind has been, uh, dominating this next fight, actually finishing the fight. And, um, you know, I don't want to speak out of time when it comes to, uh, these companies. These are, these are pretty serious companies. And, uh, I want I want to get my mind around the whole situation before speaking more on it. So I'm just not going to really comment too much on it. Is it because it's such a recent thing and you don't really have all the information that you need to do something like that? It, it, exactly, exactly. I mean, this this was just kind of thrown at me um, mm -hmm. recently. I haven't mm -hmm. spent any time or any of my energy on it. I haven't even put much thought into it right now. Um, and I realize it's a very serious deal. Right now, I have a fight coming up, so 
you know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, one, one thing at a time. All right, this is for Alex. Um, if you I were to have made, I, I can answer this after the fight, you know. You know? No problem. So this is for Alex. Um, Alex, if you were to have to decide what was more important to you in your career, would it be this rematch or just winning a title in general? I mean, I know you get the chance at both here, but is this rematch more important to you than, say, fighting Cormier again if, if, you, if he was to continue to be the champion? Yes. Yes, it is. This is the big fight I've been, I've been waiting for and I've been training for for my whole life. This is this is the one the, the fight I wanted for for a very long time. It's 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 bigger, fighting someone else for the belt. You know, this is me beating the best guy out there, beating the guy that's never been beaten, and take his place. So it's the biggest thing there is for me right now. And the last question for Alex. Um, Jones has just mentioned that he wants his first title defense to be against Cormier. He doesn't have the title yet. Do you think he's overlooking you, and he thinks this will be an easier fight than it will be? Well, I don't, you know, I don't really care so much about it, you know. I'm just, I'm just here, for, I'm, I'm here on a task, I'm here to be the best guy uh, in the world, I'm here to be the world champion, I'm here to be John, nothing else. Everything else is not important to me, you know, they can, they can, they can write whatever they want to each other on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, I don't care. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here on, a, on a mission, and my mission is to beat John, nothing else. All right, thank you, guys. Enjoy uh, your holidays, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. We will now take our next question from Damon Martin with Flowcam- flowcombat.com. Hey, guys, first question for John. Uh, John, this last year, I know it's been crazy, and you kind of get exhausted answering the same questions over and over and over again. Is there a little bit with this fight that's almost like cathartic to kind of turn the chapter, turn the page, so to speak, and just move past all that and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully write a new chapter in your career? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, winning this fight uh, definitely helps me move move forward from a lot of stuff. You know, I don't like the fact that that uh, the first fight was so close, and um, you know, there's a lot of people out there who feel as if he won the first fight. So, uh, getting to come back into the game, I do feel like I have a fresh start. I know I have a fresh start in my spirit. I have a fresh start, and uh, getting rid of old skeletons. It's always going to be nice, you know what I mean. So, you know, my my goal in this fight is to uh, dominate, finish the fight. I believe that's that's what's going to happen. And um, yeah, it'll be nice to move forward and people realize, all right, this guy was just proven. Uh, they have metabolites in his system. Obviously, for all the cowards out there who said I beat them because of steroids, that's proven to be not true. And your Cormier trying to convince people that steroids had something to do with him being knocked out. That's obviously not true. Uh, nanograms of a metabolite does not affect your performance. So for everybody who's who said uh, that, you know, so I got I finally got past that. Now for the doubt of uh, of you know Gus saying whether he won the first fight or not. I mean, you just heard the guy say, "I, I get the chance to try to beat the guy who's never been beaten." Like, which one is it? Did you beat me the first time? Because you just admitted that you didn't. Mm-hmm. But anyways. Um, yeah, man, to win this fight in devastating form, it's going to be nice, man. It's going to be real nice. You kind of just answered my next question, but I'll it's ask true. anyways. <laughs> you uh, you said in the past, and you were honest and said, that you, you probably didn't train the way you should have for the first fight with Alex. Uh, you've been very honest about that. Do you feel like you do need to go out there and dominate him, finish him, put him away uh, to show what kind of fighter you are? Because you have said in the past that you know maybe you didn't take him as seriously as you should have the first time. Training for the second fight, me and my coaching staff, we realized how underprepared we were the first time. You know, Alexander had a, he brought a different game to the game. And it was something that none of my teammates had prepared me for. This is, we just, we overlooked him. We overlooked him completely. And, uh, I mean, if you notice, round two, I was so tired, I could barely finish a double leg dive. I've been shooting doubles since I was a kid. I was just tired, man. I was exhausted in that first fight. Um, but I still had enough heart to pull out the victory. I, I kicked it to a whole different gear in the late rounds of that of that first fight. Um, 
I, I know now how underprepared I was the first time. Um, and, and, and you'll see a completely different strategy. You'll see a completely different fight. A completely different fight. And John, a lot of people, you know, have called you the greatest of all time, but you talked about over the last year, you've kind of stayed quiet, let people say what they want to say about you and just kind of be on. But, you know, you've heard, you know, Demetrius Johnson being called the best pound for pound fighter in the sport. Daniel Cormier being called, you know, the greatest fighter, maybe the greatest fighter of all time. All these different things you've heard over the last year. Is there a part of you that feels like a win here kind of reclaims that throne as well. You've heard it all. I mean, Conor McGregor, I'm DeGrace, all this thing. Do you believe this fight kind of puts you back to where you belong as A, the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the planet, and B, the greatest fighter of all time? Um, No, I don't think because being considered the best, um, I don't think one fight makes you. Like, one fight doesn't make my career. It's a journey. It's not, it's not, it's not one fight. Um, I feel like I feel like it'll always be up for debate who's the best. You know what I mean? Whoever's the best is whoever's hot at the, at the, at the present moment. I feel like MMA fans are very quick quick to forget uh, people's accomplishments. Like, for example, Anderson Silva's not even in the conversation anymore, it seems, uh, as a GOAT, which is a shame because he's done so much for our sport. Jose Aldo, you know, guys who have been just kicking ass for years. They do so much for our sport, and then, you know, one defeat – one close fight, and now they're not the best anymore. So it's like, uh, I understand that that's a conversation that always would just be an opinion. And I just try to focus on the things I can control, which is, you know, prepare myself as best I can for each fight and making sure my hands always raised at the end of the day. Awesome. A couple of questions for Alex. Uh, Alex, you know, the last fight was five years ago. Fighters change a lot between fights three months apart, much less five years ago. But what do you feel like is the biggest difference in your game now versus what it was five years ago? I'm just, I'm just physical and mentally ready for, for, for this task. Now it's, it's the right time for me. And, um, I just, I just a, di- a different type of fighter now. I've been, I've been, uh, I've been developing everything in my arsenal. I'm, I'm better in every aspect of you. I'm faster than ever. I'm, I'm, I'm a smarter fighter. Uh, every, every, every aspect of the game is much, so much better right now. And, you know, Alex, you've had a couple shots at the UFC title. The first fight with John, you know, one of the greatest fights of all time. It was very close. You challenged him more than anybody else. But at the end, you came up short in the decision. Daniel Cormier, same thing. Tremendous battle. Very close fight. Maybe could have gone your way. But again, the judges said you came up short. Do you feel like you need to go out there and really have a strong, dominant performance? Not you know, Maybe not leave it to the judges or, or, or kind of you know prove that you are the guy and not have another really close fight with a guy like John Jones? Yes, yes. I'm here to finish the fight. I'm here to look for that finish. If I get that finish, I'll give everything I have. So it's, however th- this fight will end up, I will make sure I win this fight. If 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 it if it takes that I that I push him for for five rounds, you know, or I, if if I if I if I see that. If I see the opportunity to finish, I go for that. Whatever, whatever. I'm, 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 I'm not gonna do the same mistake a third time. It's not gonna happen. I'm here. I'm here to 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 finish the job. Awesome. Thanks, Alex, and thank you, John. Best of luck next week. Again. Hey, thanks. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Keith Schillan with the MMA Takeover dot com. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, first question is to John. Uh, John, obviously you've been through a, a lot of stuff between um, run-ins with the law, suspensions. Through this, it seems like a lot of fans have turned against you. Do you care about losing fans? And also, what do you got to do to try to win them back? Um, yeah, of course you care about losing fans. You know, everybody wants to be a liked person. Um. And what I got to do to win them back is just, you know, less, make less mistakes. Make less mistakes and show signs of growth. And uh, I feel like I've grown tremendously. Having the sport taken away from me and showed me how much it really means to me. 
You know what I mean? I'm not in the business of, of taking fighters lightly anymore. I'm freaking getting all crazy right before the fight, the way I used to. You know, I feel like I've matured a lot. And uh, it all means a lot more to me now. So, um, yeah, you know, just making less mistakes. I think at the end of the day, everything is forgivable. Most things are forgivable. And, um, and especially in American culture, uh, they have a way of, of, uh, I feel like in America, people love a good comeback story. You know, I feel like they love to build athletes up, people up, celebrities up. It really, a lot of people really enjoy watching people fall. Um, but a lot of people really enjoy watching people climb up after bullshit. And so I'm aware of that. And, uh, my goal is just to climb up, get it right once and for all. And, uh, okay. You know, showing people a great comeback story. Okay. I mean, you've accomplished so many things. You beat so many great fighters. You're obviously in the debate for greatest of all time. What do you want your legacy to be when it's, when you're all done with your career? Oh, uh, what is my legacy? What would I want it to be? Hmm. Let's see here. Legacy. Just to be in a bad motherfucker at the end of the day. Just a <laughs> bad, a bad dude, man. Am I perfect? No. Am I a Christian who swears? Yes. Do I love God? Yes. Do I love my family? Yes. Um, am I a bad motherfucker in that ring? Yes. And that's it, man. You know, my, my, one thing I'm realizing is being a champion, you don't have to wear a suit every day. You don't have to be literally quite correct and and kids all the kids look up to you because you're such an angel and who who said that that's what a champion has to be a champion is the guy who goes out there after being cut in the first round of your fight being <laughs> taken down for the first time ever fighting with one eye shut half the fight freaking a champion is the guy who gets arm barred and freaking finishes Vitor Dolfer, finishes the fight with one arm. Dude, that's a champion to me. Just a bad motherfucker. So that's what I want my legacy to be. Call me a good person, a bad person. Call me a hypocrite. Call me what you want. I know I'm a bad dude. And that's what a champion is to me. The baddest dude with the biggest heart, the biggest balls. And that's me. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's going to debate that you're a bad mf -er. Um, so my last question for you, John, Brock Lesnar is a big name in the sport. He's probably the biggest money fight going right now besides Conor McGregor. There's talks that him and DC are going to get that fight in the near future. You've talked about a desire to want to fight Brock. Do you still have the desire and do you think that you deserve it more than DC? Uh, I, I don't, I don't really know about the deserving part. DC is a pretty deserving guy. He does a lot of right things carries the sport very well. Um, but fighting Brock Lesnar always is appealing. You know what I mean? That's a that's a win win situation. That's a huge money fight. That's that's me fighting a guy that's a hell of a lot bigger than me. And uh and everyone wins in that situation. I win because of the courage that it takes to step in there against a guy who's way bigger than you like that. Um I win because of the pay per view that will follow it. The fans will win. Um it'd just be great for the sport. It'd be good for everybody involved. I'm totally always up for that. Excellent. Um, over to Gus. Um, Alex, you um, are in, you're in a really tough situation. John was the champion. He gets stripped. DC becomes the champion. John defeats him. Now he's a champion again. He gets stripped again. DC's a champ. Now they're going to strip DC for the winner of this fight. If you win this fight, are you going to feel like you're the light heavyweight champion of the world? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When I win this fight, I will be the world, the world champion. Okay. And my next question to you is, I just asked John about his legacy. Do you need to get this title for your legacy? Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, this is the fight. This is it. So, uh, that's all that is. Okay. And, and my last question to you, Going back to the first fight, I know you can't take too much stuff from a fight five years ago, but when you walked in, you were a huge, massive underdog. Not many people were predicting you to win. 
Um, now, after the war, you had there's a lot of people predicting you to win. Has your confidence been built at all because of how well you did in that first fight? And many people scored the fight for you. My confidence comes from my hard training and, and, and the time I put in, all the sacrifice you do every day to become a better fighter. So that's, that's where my confidence comes from. And that was five years ago. It's in the past. I don't. I don't look at that fight anymore. We have. We have a. We have a new. New fight coming up now, and this is the fight. This is the fight. It is, and, and this is the fight. I have to win. Excellent. Uh, I wish you guys both luck and happy holidays to both of you guys. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Merry Christmas. Thank you. We'll take our uh, final question from Mark Lamonica with Newsday. Uh, it's a quick question for John. John, you spoke before about how America loves comebacks and we love to see people fall down and build themselves back up. I'm wondering, why do you think that is? What do you think it is about our, our nature, our society, whatever it is that, that makes, you know, makes that happen? Well, I think, I think people like to see people fall down because it humanizes the athlete. It, it, it reminds the people at home that this guy is no better than me. Look at this guy. He's a piece of shit. He, he does drugs and just got in a car accident. I'm better than him. You know, it, 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 it makes people feel better about themselves when they see someone who's accomplished a lot, do things that everyday people do. I think that's why they like to see people fall down. Um, you know, and as far as, Ian, I'd like to see a good comeback story. Um, it gives people hope. It gives people hope. It's like, man, if this guy can... Baby, 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 I'm going to Okay, I'm going to do It gives people hope. It gives people hope. If this guy can come back from this and that, and his mom dying being severely depressed, losing his job when he know he did nothing wrong. If this guy can come back from that, you know, who am I to give up? My, you know, my boyfriend broke up with me. My girlfriend broke up with me. And now I feel like my whole world is over. It's like, it, it puts things in perspective for people, I think. Um, and that's why I continue to fight. Dude, this summer, I was so freaking sad. And uh, I thought to myself, how easy would it be for me to take nine world championships, several million dollars, and just walk away from the sport. Delete Instagram, delete Twitter, never worry about what fans had to say ever again. I mean, that's the easy route. We've seen people do that before. We've seen people in the past lose a fight and never come back. Um, That's the easy route. Um, A real man comes back, spaces the music, does it all over again, rebuilds it from ground up all over again. Um, So, I don't know. I just, comeback story part it gives other people hope and uh and i love love the fact that my story is controversial um because it shows that i'm far from perfect um, and it shows you have a guy like john jones can do it you know who says anyone can so, mm-hmm. awesome mm-hmm. thank you john appreciate your time no, no doubt i'll we'll turn the conference back over to mr costello for any additional closing remarks Thanks, Cody. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us on today's call.